Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. Uh, I'm going to show you guys an old school uh, skill here today that I haven't showed yet on my channel, and that's rendering lard. And uh, lard was a pretty important commodity down on the farm, and uh, they would make uh, their lard when they would uh, butcher. And butchering season was typically in um, the end of October and the first couple of weeks of November when it got cold, most of the harvesting was uh, done. Um, and butchering was a neighborhood affair. You know, all the men would go over to a particular farm for a couple of days and they would uh, butcher and they would grind the sausage, they would brine the hams and um, they would spread out the uh, side pork in the uh, um, smoke houses, but they would put their uh, brown sugar and salt on that so they could cold smoke that for their bacon in uh, the wintertime. Part of that was our uh, rendering lard, and they would render lard on old um, kerosene heaters and kerosene stoves. Now, these kerosene stoves were quite the contraption. They would have a couple of burners, and they would have a large glass container on the side that would hold the uh, kerosene, and they would use cast iron cauldrons to uh, render that lard in. And I got my cast iron Dutch oven back there. That's what I'm going to use here today. I don't have a kerosene uh, stove to show you guys, so I'm going to have to do it on the regular stove here in the house. And I'm actually going to show you guys how to put that uh, lard in crocks. Now, Nowadays, most people, if they make lard, they're going to put it in um, pint uh, jars and they're going to seal it up. But the old timers would uh, actually skim off the uh, lard as it was rendering down and they would put it in crocks. And then they would put those crocks down in their basement with either a lid on it or a plate with a weight. And uh, they would use that throughout the winter. So if they needed some lard to make some biscuits or something, they would go down. They would take a scoop of that out, get a cup of lard, bring it up, cut it in their flour, and they would make their uh, biscuits. And it would keep um, all winter for them down in those uh, old cold basements that uh, we had here in uh, Michigan. And you can see the crock I got sitting back there. Now, one thing, if you're using crocks to uh, lard meat, um, that's another video that I did, uh, lard and meat and uh, curing pork and uh, making sausage. I've done videos on all that. That stuff but if you use a crock um, specifically um, for lard that's all you want to use it for you don't want to switch that back and forth between like a fermenting crock or something so if you got a crock where you larded meat in or you store lard in, that's all that you uh, use it for so anyway I'm gonna get some of uh, the pork uh, fat that I got here cut up and uh, cut up fine get it in that uh, cast iron uh, Dutch oven back there and get it uh, rendering for you guys and uh, show you guys how it's all done anyway you guys stick around all right, guys, uh, got my uh, pork fat out here, and I'm starting to cut it up. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can uh, you can grind it, and uh, you can dice it up really fine. The old timers, they would just uh, dice it up, and they would um, do it like that. Uh, they didn't grind the fat before they uh, rendered it. And uh, another thing here, um, I don't have the ideal uh, fat to do this. There are differences in... Uh, pork fat when you're making lard, but it'll all make some type of lard for you. And uh, I think it's a good illustration to show you guys this because, you know, if something happens, you might not always get the most optimal ingredients to make stuff. And, uh, you know, when you watch prepping videos and stuff, um, people always usually show you, you know, the optimal stuff to use. Well, this wasn't optimal what I had here. It's basically uh, bits and pieces of side pork what I'm using. So all I'm doing is I'm trimming off my, uh, meat portions of uh, the side pork and I'm using that because you know the old timers they used uh, everything and that little bit of uh, meat that I'm trimming off there that can go into beans that can be used to uh, make bean soup it can be uh, saved and ground into sausage the next time I make it so nothing's going to waste here but uh, you know you got to use what you got and I'm actually uh, dicing them up and I'm throwing them into my cast iron um, Dutch oven here, and I got uh, my heat on the lowest setting. We definitely don't want to burn this. You know, I remember uh, the old timers when they were doing this. I was probably, the last time I seen this done in person, I was probably 9, 10 years old. And uh, as uh, the lard started to render out, they would skim uh, the lard off of the top. And uh, they would continue to let the rest of it cook down until it was, uh, the first lard would be like, uh, would be your white, would be your lighter lard, and then the secondary lard, that would be your darker stuff. And that's what they left the uh, cracklings in. Then they would skim those cracklings out and uh, throw them on, uh, torn up uh, brown paper bags, throw a little salt on them. And that's what they would use for a snack when they were out there um, working. But anyway, I got this on the lowest setting here. We're going to just uh, keep a close eye on this, stir it every once in a while. And I'm going to get the rest of my uh, fat trimmed and uh, cut up. And we're going to get that in the Dutch oven for you guys and show you what it looks like. 
this is what it looks like about uh, two and a half hours into it. Um, I started out with about six and a half, just under six and a half pounds of uh, pork fat and uh, had probably a half, maybe a little bit more than half a pound of uh, trimmings off of that. And uh, the rest was cut up and uh, put into this pot. And like I said, it's been simmering about two and a half hours or so now. It's getting to the point where pretty soon here I'm going to start ladling uh, some of the uh, lard off and start getting it into uh, my crock. I'm actually going to um, run it through a uh, cheesecloth in a metal strainer to uh, put it in the crock. And this is how I got my uh, crock set up. I got my uh, cheesecloth and my uh, strainer. This uh, this particular strainer sets nicely into this uh, crock right here. And we're just going to start ladling this out here in a little bit. And uh, straining out any um, little bits that might be in there so we get our lard as pure as possible. Well, guys, you can see here um, what it looks like about four hours into it. I've just been uh, slowly ladling off the uh, lard as it's been uh, rendering. And you can see there the little brown bits are starting to uh, come through, starting to form my uh, cracklings. I've just been uh, ladling the lard out and putting it through my uh, strainer. And you can see here what it looks like in uh, the crock. Um, just been uh, slowly ladling it out and putting it in the crock. The crock's about, um, I'd say, one-third full right now the way it stands. And then those are the bits that I've uh, strained out. Now, I'm going to do a video at the very end to show what uh, this um, lard looks like when it solidifies. I remember the lard uh, being just sort of a cream color. It wasn't the, the real brilliant white like you see of the store-bought lards, the stuff that the uh, old-timers made. But uh, when I get to that point, I'm going to show you hopefully the uh, cracklings out of here and uh, what the finished lard looks like. All right, it's been another hour, and uh, all my lard is out now, and now I've got uh, my cracklings here to contend with. And... Uh, you can see here the nice golden brown. They smell like uh, bacon. You can see the uh, little bit of the smoke coming off of it there. And I'm going to get these guys on some uh, brown paper, just like the old timers used to do it. And when we uh, got all the cracklings out of here, we're going to uh, season these guys with just a little bit of salt. This is our yield of uh, lard. I got about a half a crock there, and it's uh, looking pretty good, strained out real nice. And here is my salted uh, cracklings that we can uh, use for snacks or maybe throw into a little uh, cornbread. And then here's actually the uh, Dutch oven with a little bit of that browned uh, lard in it. And I'm here to tell you, if you cut up some uh, potatoes and throw them in there that will make the best fried potatoes that you ever had in your life the best fried potatoes i ever had was always uh made with lard anyway when uh this sets up here i'm going to show you exactly what the uh finished product looks like This is what the uh, finished lard looks like. It's had a little bit of time here to uh, set up. 
and I'm going to let this set all night long until it uh, firms up 100%. It's still just a little bit liquid in the center. I don't know if you guys can tell on the uh, camera here, but it's just a little bit off-white or uh, cream color, and that is pretty much how I remember the old-timers uh, lard uh, looking. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to let this set until tomorrow morning so it's good and firm. I'm going to take a little bit of wax paper. I'm going to uh, press that down on the top to uh, cover it up. Then I'm going to use a plate and a weight to uh, cover it. And then it's going to go down in our cool basement. And we're just going to uh, use it. You certainly could put this in uh, the refrigerator as well. But our basement's pretty cool and lard. The old timers always kept the lard in a crock down in their cool basement, so I'm just going to do the same with uh, this. And then when I need some, I'll just go down, take the plate off of it, and uh, take out the wax paper and take out a scoop of uh, it for whatever I'm uh, using it for, either making biscuits or frying potatoes or just any number of things that you would uh, use lard for. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video here, me uh, rendering some lard for you off of my recollections how the old timers did it and uh, talking a little bit uh, about butchering time down on the farm. Anyways, Modern Refugee, I appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope you guys got a little information, a little entertainment out of this video as always. You guys have a good one.